Hello and uh, welcome back. Uh, today I have a very cool multimeter. It's a Nixie again. It's from Fluke. It's the 8300A. And I bought it in an auction on eBay. And it's from Germany. And uh, yeah, it's a seller I, I buy more from. And uh, he is very serious. I think it's from Hanover. And they even have a test report, so you know exactly what is working and what is not working, so you really know what you what you buy. Uh, of course, a lot of other people also know this, so you don't get it uh, necessarily cheap. But you know what you buy, that is important. And uh, they even, you know, it's even signed by the tester. So they did some tests, 10 volt, 100 volt, 500 volt. They even did some millivolt testing, AC volt testing, and they did the kilo ohms, but they failed doing the the five and the ten max. Um, but I also saw some of these uh, clips were missing, those uh, binding post shorting things. So I, I bought a few, and we test later, and maybe then it starts to work because. Especially with those uh, high impedances, I really think that you need those uh, clips there. And it was tested uh, 2020, 20, 12, 27. So this is more or less when I bought it. And I used the calibrator 768A from Fluke and the 3330B. So that's cool. So, uh, huh? Let's have a look if I put my little voltage reference uh, on it, if it uh, also works. Let's see. It does switch on. That is cool. Ah, let's just do it. It's just, just switch on. So, <laughs> yes, that is five volts. Cool. Let's have a closer look. Look at that. I tried to zoom in a bit. Yeah, it looks really nice. And now it's heating, it's getting even closer to the numbers. So this one was calibrated well. Look at this 7.5 and the 10 volts. Yeah, and if you look in my calibrator, it should be 10, 0, 0, 0, 7, 4. Look at this 10, 0, 0, 6. <laughs> cool. Yes, and uh, here we measure the ohms. This should be 180k, 17994. Well, if you see, it goes up and down, up and down on the 180. And you can even change a little bit the sample, right? But this up and down, up and down could, could be because of these uh, binding post shorts that are not there. Or it could also be that uh, the switches. No? So we're gonna clean those anyway. So look at this from the top. It is huge. It is really, really big. But it looks very nice and uh, and, and strong. I like that. So, uh, well, there are some stickers. Maybe this one I keep, but maybe not on the top. I will try to get it loose September. 1993 and uh, so that's probably the last calibration although the failures were still uh, very good
Wow. Look at this. This is very, very nice. You can see you can have a lot of options, I think, because it, this is completely empty. Spare fuse right here. I like that. Yeah, it's just the adjustment sequence, exactly what you need to do. Here also. Very, very nice. Let's see what is underneath this protection plate. Look at this. Maybe if I add some light. Yeah. So. Here are the extra modules. And it looks all very nice. Here is the fuse. So where you can put the spare. And all the ICs are in sockets, which is nice. Now we have a look at the bottom. It looks just as nice. Also with the nice protection plate, exactly where you need to adjust. But this is all external or ref, it seems. Okay, plate removed, the front strip removed. And now we can have a better look at everything. It seems that they have done some repairs here. I think this is in the Nixie area. And here they replaced two transistors, it seems. The rest it looks still very, very nice. Well, removing the front was uh, actually very easy. Um, I only took out the front uh, button here, the sample right, and two screws here, two screws in the sides there, and here we have the whole front. And uh, now we can easily clean the window, clean the switches, and I'm also a little bit afraid to take out the circuit boards the way it's, it's constructed and it is working fine. So I will just leave that as it is. And um, the, the, the buttons I can more easily clean, but I can probably just spray a little bit in to get the switches working, maybe a little bit better. And then I don't touch too much. And what you can maybe see is that the mixes are a little bit like this. They are tilted to the right. So uh, I carefully want to push them back, and uh, but it, as you can see, it is fairly clean. So it's not much to do. Look at this, it is very, very, very bright and shiny. I uh, did cheat a little bit because I changed the strip from the top to the bottom and the other way around because it was really damaged and also... So, uh, and the bottom one actually looked quite nice. So I will zoom in and uh, let's have a closer look. Look at this, it's all shiny and the Nixies are very, very bright again. I always like that. I also put the uh, binding post uh, shorts. So, uh, I think it should then respond as it should. 
so we can check with the home slides. Well, zero is really zero. That is nice. So I uh, added the bounding post uh, shorts and uh, I calibrated it quickly. And as you can see, it is exactly 10.0007 as it should be. So uh, that is very nice. So uh, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, there was not really much to do just then, then, then cleaning because it was uh, working fine. And the, the calibration was only very, very little uh, adjustments. So uh, yeah, the Fluke uh, 8300. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.